Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Cherno. The Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart State of Play just dropped. I have not seen it yet. It's a 16 minute video that's going to show some gameplay and some other exciting things about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which of course is an upcoming PlayStation 5 game due for release June 11. Uh, it's probably the PlayStation 5 game that I'm most excited for as it stands at the moment. Now, because this is a 16 minute video, I'll have the actual like Ratchet and Clank State of Play Rift Apart video uh, linked in the description below. But because it's 16 minutes, uh, I don't know how long this reaction is going to be. I don't want to just watch it like I usually do, pause it and basically not enjoy it. I want to actually see it and process it and think about it a little bit. So I might end up either in this video going back and then pointing out my detailed thoughts about certain things later, or I might actually just upload another video with my kind of analysis versus this, which is just going to be a reaction. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know how it'll go yet because I haven't seen it. Um, let's take a look at the state of play. Mix of gameplay and cinematic footage. Okay, I, I know I said I wouldn't do this, but I swear something changed there. <laughs> this thing just got a little bit more faded for some reason halfway through that. You can kind of see it there. Weird, but whatever. I like the particles. I'm Marcus Smith, creative director of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, a brand new full-length Ratchet & Clank adventure built from the ground up for the PlayStation 5 console. Today we're going to introduce you to some of the gameplay, so much stuff going on. and arsenal of Rift Apart. Whether you've played every game since Ratchet & Clank's debut, or you're brand new to the series, I'm brand new to the series, you could probably say, because I haven't played these games in 10 years. One thing I wanted to point out is, I'm not sure if I want to be introduced to all of the characters and everything. I kind of, I'm looking forward to playing this game. <laughs> I don't know if, um, standalone adventure that you won't want if miss. I want this, but we'll Let's see. Oh, those puddle reflections are beautiful. Want to make a shot better? Just add wet puddles everywhere. That's like all the trick in the book. Clank? Clank? Wombats? What is this place? Search for Where Clank. Are you, Clank? Maybe someone around here has seen him. Have any of you seen a little gray robot anywhere? Uh, green eyes, red antenna, very oh, charming. What a beautiful environment. Looks great, and there's so much stuff Ratchet going on. Has been separated from his best friend and partner Clank, and is now in a new dimension and a mysterious urban sprawl called Nefarious City. <laughs> The visual effects look great. And I love the colors. Please let there be good news behind here. Ratchet quickly finds out that in this dimension, Dr. Nefarious is a much more capable villain. It's almost like a little blur vignette around certain things. Like the edges look kind of blurred. Like the four corners. I love this environment. There are two Nefariouses now? Very detailed. Clink first, Nefarious later. Maybe he's in this bazaar. Thanks to the new hardware, the worlds in Rift Apart are more beautiful than ever. Cities that's, are full of life with traffic and civilians that's milling definitely about true. everywhere. Rift Apart is full of the unexpected. Characters in this new dimension are not always the same as they were in Ratchet and Clank's dimension. Ratchet comes across Miss Zircon, the weapon vendor in Rift Apart. Wait a second. You forgot your order. Well, come right in. 
I love how seamless the transition is between the cutscenes and the gameplay. It's it's great. New Lombax named Rivet. Quank! <laughs> Puddle splashes look a bit cartoony. No. No. I need to go after that ship. How can I get off planet? It's a test. Only royal starships are allowed I like to the live. texture on her. Phantom can help. Just follow the bait to Club Nefarious and you will find him. Club Nefarious, got it. Oh, and nice work, Secret Agent Zircon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to pause for a second. Look at the, look at these like water drops. <laughs> these look like little little um like little overlays on the screen. Nice work, <laughs> look at <Zircon>. them. <laughs> That's funny. This is so exciting. Club Nefarious shouldn't be hard to miss. Better look around. Ah, oh, that fog as well, and the transition into the background is great. Audio is very high quality as well. I like that little heat wave from the brutes. Yeah, lots of particles. Sounds like a club, all right. Man, what a cool feeling environment, though. On, Phantom, where are you? Once Ratchet finds Phantom, he learns a couple of new moves. Wow. Points of gameplay in Rift Apart is increased mobility. Ratchet can now dash and wall run to traverse levels. This focus on mobility allows players to chain moves together to create exhilarating combat. Your your now let's jump into combat. The nefarious day spa. If you can distract these troopers, I'll hack Nefarious's propaganda blimp and give this city a message it'll never forget. That, those backgrounds as well. Yeah. Looks easy enough. I'm excited for this. For this game. Dashing allows you to evade attacks or gain strategic advantages. Enemies can't hit what doesn't momentarily exist. Wow, wow, look at those damage to the floor there. Dimensional tears in the world allow you to use the Rift Tether, another right, universal go. mechanic to instantly Damn. pull yourself across battlefields to escape or flank enemies. Weapons in Rift Apart utilize the power of the DualSense wireless controllers, adaptive triggers, and haptic feedback to allow players to really feel the power of their arsenal. Yeah, that's cool. For example, cool. with the burst pistol, players can pull back the trigger partway to peck out accurately placed single shots. But pulling the trigger fully unleashes a rapid fire spread that mm. covers more area. In either case, players will feel each shot burst from the weapon and connect with them. A lot of these the kind of um players can pull the trigger down halfway to fire a single barrel, reducing time between reloads. Or pull the trigger fully and unleash both barrels with a devastating close range attack. Thanks to the haptics, the player will feel the power of their shots yeah. through their hands. I was gonna say that a lot of these, uh, like, you know, PlayStation exclusive games can really take advantage of specifically the hardware. Same with Xbox as well. 
you need your exclusive As games. Ratchet attempts to follow Rivet and Clank, he encounters a nefarious juggernaut. Where did you even come from? Please stand still. During this fight, more dimensional chaos ensues. Thanks to the power of the SSD, we can near instantly teleport players to completely different locations. Mm -hmm. This isn't some small arena being loaded, but the entire level from a different planet. I'm sure entire level is a bit of a stretch, but yeah. I'll explain what I mean about Let's that later. Let's jump over and see what's going on with Rivet and Clank. As you may have guessed, Rivet is a brand new playable character in the series. Where are you taking me? I was gonna take you to my hideout, but first I gotta rescue my friends at their gelatonium factory. Rift Apart includes several alternate dimension versions of classic planets from past games. That sun is Did beautiful. We how stunning and alive the effect our on this are. as well. Thanks to the power of the PS5 and the 3D audio, we've been able to create alien planets with an immersive density like never before. Let's yeah. Check it out. Speed just everything can just be more dense. Everything can be more detailed. More power, more detail. More work <laughs> for the developers. This wasn't what was in my account last time. That is because I added our mutual friend on Nefarious City. Okay. In Rift Apart, you get to play with an explosive new arsenal, as well as a few returning classics. Here's another example of how we're using the dual sense. With the topiary sprinkler, players will feel resistance in the trigger as they prepare a throw of this garden grenade. Once on the ground and spitting out its rapid growth plant fertilizer, players will also feel when enemies have been topiaried and are ready to be trimmed down. That's cool. Advantage of a console over a PC, I guess, with the controller. Well, specifically, I guess, controller advantage rather than platform, but yeah. In addition to rift tethering and dimensional shifts, there are also many pocket dimensions scattered throughout the game. And the last Speedle runs into that rift thingy. Interesting. You must have a rift tether in your glove, too. Oh, that's so cool, just that whole what is this place? transition I, um, between scenes. A dimensional pocket? Perhaps a symptom of the Dimensionator's destruction. Oh, that's so cool. I love the effects around the edges as well. Hey, it's Maynard, the Mortz's helper bot. Must have wandered in through the rift somehow. There is the Speedle. No, no, don't hide! Ugh. Hitting its nest might get its attention. Well, hello there. Seamless. Come on, Maynard. Let's find the Morts. 
Riding speedles is one way of traversing Sargasso's acid swamps, and to do so quickly. Excuse me! Look out! I got it! I got it! See? Sometimes I don't crash. Stop! 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 There's the gelatonium factory. I'm coming, Mort. We didn't follow that Lombax and his robo-pet across dimensions just to get stopped by some fuzzballs. So you <laughs> got like nine and a half seconds to tell us where they're at. One. <laughs> Hang on there now. If you watched our previous gameplay demo, like the you voice acting as well. Goons for less. This rebranded gang has been hired by Dr. Nefarious to attack Ratchet and Clank, and are now also trapped in Rivet's dimension. Here's another new weapon. The Shatter Bomb is a frag-type grenade that deals a lot of damage to your foes. With haptic feedback, each explosion feels incredibly impactful. That looks great as well. Just a small taste of some of the early gameplay in Rift Apart. That's beautiful. So much more. We have open areas to explore. Dimensional clank puzzles. Glitch challenges. Arena challenges. Aerial combat. Oh wow. Gold bolts to collect. <laughs> Pocket dimensions to explore. Armor to obtain and use in the first ever Ratchet and Clank photo mode. Wow, that's cool. Everyone's doing a photo and mode more these days. Access to playing our games is always important to us. As such, Rift Apart will offer a slew of accessibility options. We'll reveal more about this soon. Experience Rift Apart's new planets, weapons, intense high action combat, and near instant load times, all with some of the best visuals we've ever created. Mm -hmm. These rips are getting out of hand. On behalf of all of us at Insomniac Games, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the Omniverse on June 11th. Okay, so um, let's talk about this. So, I mean, my thoughts straight away, uh, probably take this off. Um, uh, like this is, it, it, this just feels like such a high quality game. Like I, um, you know, consoles aside, I mean, Insomniac have always been great, but uh, you know, let's not talk about like the PlayStation 5 specifically here. I just want to talk about the developers and I just want to talk about this product because this is, um, this just feels really good. There were some things that stood out to me a little bit. Um, uh, you know, when, when I mention certain things, it's it's not like it, it's difficult for me to phrase it sometimes because I don't want to. I don't want to make it look like I'm attacking the game or being like, oh, this is this is bad. This is bad. Because the thing is, what I'm doing now is I'm analyzing this. I can tell you guys straight away that, and I've said this before, that I think this game is fantastic. I think that like this is definitely the best game I've seen for the platform. Um, I don't think anything, and, and a lot of this is subjective, right? Like, you know, uh, other people might look at this game and be like, this looks a bit too, like, for children or look, looks too colorful for me. I want something deep. I want something R18+. plus. Like, uh, you, you know, whatever. Um, I don't really care. This is These are my thoughts, obviously. Um, this game and its environments um, blow my mind because... First of all, uh, I like the aesthetic a lot. I think that the aesthetic itself, so meaning like the shading that they've gone with, the fact that it's not really quite photorealistic, but it, it does look like that at times. I think it fits the universe perfectly. I think that um, 
the fact that they've created these rifts in the world is a perfect um, is a perfect way to take advantage of of the fact that this is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. So that means that it's exclusively designed for the hardware and thus they're taking advantage of the strong points of the hardware. Sometimes this can be a bit of a fault because, you know, I think I mentioned this like a year ago, you know, oh, we have a fast SSD. Let's design a game around that. Could be weird, um, you know, but on the other hand, this obviously feels very natural. I think this is a fantastic use of it. Um, he said at one point, I don't know exactly where this was, think around here, that it's able to load entire worlds at once. Um, and not just like little arenas, but actually like the whole world. I highly doubt that it's loading the entire world. Um, not because it can't, I mean, it probably can't, but not because of that, but just because like that wouldn't make any sense, right? Usually um, games like this, and this was actually, um, Mark discussed this uh, in a, um, when this was like, uh, this was uh, ages ago. Um, this was, uh, this was like the PS5, I, I, the road to PS5, that's what it was called, right? He talked about this uh, as well, was the fact that the SSD is so fast means that we don't have to keep assets in memory. We don't have to keep them in the GPU memory. We can actually keep them on the SSD and then basically load them up into our memory, you know, do whatever we need to do with them to get them there. Um, in time for rendering, you know, with the speed of someone turning around, like the camera turns around, oh, there's a rock behind, it hasn't been loaded yet, let's quickly load that because we know we're gonna need that soon. Um, I mean, it probably wouldn't be that dramatic for most games, I think, but it could be, it could still be divided into areas just because it wouldn't make sense for these larger open worlds to try and have the whole thing um, in memory at once. I don't think there would be enough memory for that. I don't think that that would be something that you would do. Um, but obviously, uh, obviously you still need, if you are loading a completely different scene, there's a lot of data that needs to get loaded regardless of where you are in that scene, not just the immediate assets surrounding you. Um, and the fact that like, you know, you know, this kind of transition of streaming it in like that, um, especially with assets of this quality, I think that like this really is a really good way to showcase the power of that SSD and decompression chip on the PlayStation 5. So that that's for sure, like no arguments from me there. One thing I noticed around this time, uh, which I haven't seen before, and you know, I mean, I'm trying not to look at this as like a game engine developer um, that's trying to point out the flaws, right? I, I, I'm i trying to look at it as someone who wants to pick up this Hope game. One thing that I noticed around here, I think, um, Once on the ground, that I hadn't seen before was a little bit of detail kind of coming and going, I think, um, which down. again, you know, will happen anywhere, right? Um, but actually, Wait. I think it was a little bit before here. Let me try and find it. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. As as a uh, rivet is running through this area here, if you pay attention to this shadow, you can actually see the transition between this kind of state. I just backed up a little bit because it can be difficult to see. This is a good example as well. If you watch here, you can see the kind of softer, lower resolution shadow versus as we move forward, it fades in to being a much higher resolution one. And then you can also see that somewhat with the leaves as well, but this is a, another really good place where you can observe that, right? It looks like a bit of a, uh, like a solid shadow here as a whole. And then as you get closer, it kind of slides into being, you know, like being able to actually discern the light going through leaves and stuff like that. So um, just one more time, you know, for those of you interested, there's that slide happening. Here's another example of this is very popular. Um, it's probably cascaded shadow mapping. Um, now, it, whether or not this game uses ray trace shadows, I think is also, it's difficult to tell. Me looking at these shadows, I'm not some kind of rendering technique master. Um, I'm not like a technical artist probably who can look at this and be like, oh yeah, this is this is the technique they're using. Um, this might as well be shadow mapping. I don't see anything here that prevents it from just being really good, well done shadow mapping. Um, so I don't know if it's ray traced or not, but certainly what it looks like is just different shadow cascades. Um, and that's pretty normal. Usually that just means that the area around the camera, which in this case is also around the player, is rendered um, with a much kind of tighter shadow kind of frustum so that we can actually pick up. Um, actually, I've got a, might have a video you guys might be interested in that discusses the way that I added shadows into my engine. I'll have it linked up there. Um, and if you're looking for a more technical explanation because that kind of technique is used 
in all games pretty much these days. Um, I'm not sure how ray tracing and ray trace shadows will affect that specifically, but basically it just means that the area around the player you know, like everything else in, in a lot of games, is going to be higher quality. And then as you get further away, you have to basically, in this case with the Shadow Cascades, you back up the, the, the Shadow kind of camera, the Shadow Frostum a little bit to get a lower resolution view that encompasses more of the scene. And you use that for things that are further away versus, um, you know, pixels that are closer, basically get shaded with that higher quality, more tight kind of Shadow Frostum. Um, so that's kind of what I'm seeing here. That's, that's always traditionally been a little bit sense. disruptive. It almost looks like Unreal Engine's kind of fading as well between the cascades, which they like to do. Um, but other than that, like a lot of the stuff that I've seen, like it, they've done a very, like there have been other, other areas that look like you can kind of see the transition between objects further away popping in, not really popping in, more like drifting in, sliding in smoothly. I don't know what to say. It, it's very not noticeable. And I think if you weren't looking for it, um, you probably, it wouldn't break the immersion, but it's still something that I'm seeing. Um, you know, uh, I wanted to point out as well that the thing is with these games, when you look at these games and you look at the amount of detail that's possible here, me as a game person, I don't know, game developer, game engine developer, when I look at this, um, what I see with these more detailed environments, rather than necessarily getting excited about that, I immediately think of the work necessary to make these more detailed environments. The more detailed you go with your environment, the more detail you can output on your console, the harder, the, the more work it requires to actually create those assets, right? Because I mean, this is a very simple example, but if you look at, if you looked at like consoles back in the day, let's just say that this was like on a PlayStation 2 or whatever, you know, apart from the assets just being lower resolution, look at this scene. There wouldn't be rocks in the background or maybe they would be, but they'd just be painted on. You know, there wouldn't be as many trees. There wouldn't be as many brushes. So what, what does that mean? That means that, oh, okay, well, we don't have to make more trees or we don't have to put more detail into this. We can just, you know, put a little flat texture there, you know, one tree in the background done. You know solved because of the hardware limitation. Now that obviously is a bad thing because it means that I'm limited in what I can do, but it's also a bit of a, it makes it easier for the team. It means the teams can be smaller. They can get the games done faster. There's less of like a potential um, problem, you know, with assets being too high quality, um, meaning that like, you know, engines and other software has to be more complicated to manage the loading and offloading of that data. And this is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of complexity that comes with this level of detail. Um, but the tools are also getting better. You know, Unreal Engine, for example, has, you know, bought Quixel a while ago, Quixel Mega Scans, and, you know, their, their entire kind of uh, asset library, meaning that, like, oh, you want a little dirt texture like that? Well, there's a really good one available. You can get it from Quixel. Um, you can import it, and you're, it's licensed for use in Unreal Engine games, as an example. So even though it is getting more detailed, the as, like asset libraries are growing. It means that you don't really necessarily need to do that. You can use various tools in game engines to scatter foliage automatically. Um, it makes it a lot easier in ways. So there, you know, if you're making everything from scratch, yeah, it would be really difficult. But just something I'm noticing here that I'm definitely like, I'm at the level where I'm just looking at this being like, damn, like this stuff is so rich, so dense. Um, there's so, there's just so much stuff going on here that this is, this is definitely feeling like one of those games where I'm probably just going to want to run around and aimlessly and just admire the work that these artists and people have, have actually put into creating this environment because it definitely looks like that. It sounds amazing as well. I'm assuming if you had like, you know, the kind of PlayStation 5 3D headphones and stuff, uh, it would sound incredible. I like the fact that they've taken advantage of, of like the controller, um, you know, haptic feedback and the kind of um, adaptive uh, triggers or whatever they're called. That stuff is definitely good as well. Um, it's always good to see a game that actually fully takes advantage of the new hardware of the new generation. This is definitely feeling like it. Also those kind of pocket dimensions, you know, you can see in this frame as well, the effects that they're putting into it. You've got that blur, kind of the radial blur almost kind of um, being not, not in the middle, but then as you go further, it just becomes more blurry with the chromatic aberration as well. Um, you know, the, the sun, the tone mapping, the, the balance of this HDR image is truly good. I'm assuming it'll support, obviously it'll support like HDR 
our TVs and everything. Um, like I, I this is just it's, it's. I think people don't realize how difficult it is to actually create something like this. Um, it's the details. It's the little things. It's it's the little things, but it's also the big things. It's the little things, the little things that they've put in here that you wouldn't even think to put in there. But also, it's the simple things like how does color work? How does light work? What is our lighting setup? Are we using too many lights? Is it bad? Is it good? What about all the neon lights in the background? You know, how is these frames feel so balanced to me? I, I could keep talking about this for a while. You know, I had some coffee before as well. It's probably probably fueling the fire, but like. This is um, this is great, and I just like with this aesthetic, um, you know, with this non kind of photorealistic style. I'm not even sure how much further they could go with this if they had infinite power. You know, again, we're talking about like those kind of pop ins that I was talking about, like just um, you know not being able to have the highest quality detail in areas a little bit further from the player, which is pr probably always going to be a limitation, right? As long as you push the you push the hardware, but you push the detail closer to the player. But like the stuff that is around the player feels like it's at the maximum quality. Like I'm just not sure if there are enough pixels in even a 4K TV to be like, you know, I mean, I'm assuming maybe there, there would be if you really looked at it. But my point being that like, I just, apart from maybe not having to worry about objects further away, having to be at a lower level of detail, at a lower resolution, at a lower complexity, and then having to load the higher resolution, higher quality assets as you get closer to them, as the camera gets closer to them. Aside from that, I don't even know where you would go from here. Like it looks great, it feels great. The story, everything ties in together. I just, I don't have a single bad thing to say about what I'm seeing right now. I just can't. Like, you know, I know this style of game isn't going to suit everyone. I don't know if for me this game would get a 10 out of 10. I actually might play this. I might, I don't know, maybe I'll put up a few videos of me playing this if you guys are interested and in actually seeing my experience with it because I'm definitely going to be buying this game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, I don't know how much I'll enjoy the game, but from a product, from what I'm seeing here, it's just phenomenal and I think that this is, I think it's going to be an amazing game. And I think that if you own a PlayStation 5, I think this is definitely going to be something you can you can pick up. It sounds like I'm being paid by them. It sounds like um, they've sent me a copy, which they haven't, which they could potentially. But like, it just, it sounds like, I don't know what to say. Like I, I as, as someone who has worked in the industry, as someone who's, I guess, still in the industry, but in my own way now with my own game engine and making my own games and all of that stuff, like I just know what it's, I know what this is like and I appreciate this. I appreciate this so much and I'm so impressed by, by this. I'm just impressed by it. Again, I don't know if I'll enjoy the game until I actually play it, but I'm very impressed by everything I've seen um, with this and then the, the trailer that I looked at the other day as well. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is a bit of a longer video. Um, I, could, I, could, I, I don't, I'm not gonna split it into two videos. I'll just put like chapters so you guys can see the reaction and then my kind of review. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think of this format where I kind of watch stuff more or less um, uninterrupted and just, just so that I honestly can experience it more. I don't know how much you guys actually care about my reaction being like, oh, <gasps> this, <gasps> you know, whatever. I don't know. I'm not really, I don't really care about that. I don't think, I don't know how much you guys do do either, but like, um, it's more just so that I can actually watch it uninterrupted and experience it the way it's meant to be experienced before I start pausing it and dissecting it, which is what I've done later. I think that was all, like I didn't take notes down. So there's probably a bunch of stuff that I could have said that I missed, but I think you guys get the general idea. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below and I will see you next time. Goodbye.